Recently I did a show on non anti-inflammatory medications, NSAIDs for short. You would know them as ibuprofen, uh, um, Motrin, Aleve, and so forth, uh, naproxen, aspirin. Those are the non anti-inflammatory medications, okay? I mean, the, the, the most common one is ibuprofen that, that people take. So we talked about that it causes 16,500 people per year just in the United States to die. We've known that for 20 years. Also, we know that 107,000 people a year end up in hospital with serious gastrointestinal bleeding. We've also known that about 20 years. Okay. So those are the things we talked about in the last one. Uh, but what I wanted to bring to you, your attention is something else that wraps in more powerful things. You might think, well, I didn't die and I'm taking ibuprofen, I'm okay, and I didn't get a serious gastrointestinal ulcer or something like that. So, I'm okay. You might want to think about that, and that's what this show is about. So, this reference is from Dr. Stephen Gundry, a medical physician who wrote the book called The Plant Paradox. And this is out of his, uh, his book. He has a section on non anti-inflammatory drugs. He ran into a doctor in the hallways of his hospital who asked him, do you know what intestinal webs are? And Dr. Gundry said, no, I don't know that. He he started to tell him he had to do surgery on this woman that had intestinal webs, which was basically all this gunky scar tissue in the small intestine that he had to remove. He discovered these webs of tissue like washers on the fitting of a garden hose, which almost completely blocked the entire interior of the tube. Now we're getting there. Hold on. This is quite common in people who regularly use NSAIDs such as Advil and Motrin, both brands of ibuprofen, or Aleve, Naproxen, Mobic, Celebrex, and Aspirin. All were introduced in the early 1970s for pain and fever relief as an arthritis medication in lieu of aspirin. Prolonged use of aspirin was clearly associated with damage to the stomach lining. But because other NSAIDs did not damage the stomach, drug companies heralded them as nothing short of miraculous. NSAIDs do not damage the stomach lining, which we can view with a gastroscope. Instead, they damage the lining of the small intestine, which is beyond the reach of a scope. So if people are having gastrointestinal complaints and they get the gastroscope that only goes to the stomach, they might not see the damage that is beyond. Because we could not see their ill effects, NSAIDs have done extreme damage to the barrier that keeps not just lectins, plant lectins, we'll get into that some other times, but also lipopolysaccharides out of you. Copious research published over the last half century reveals that gulping down apparently harmless NSAIDs are like swallowing a live grenade. These drugs blow gaping holes in the mucus line intestinal barrier that's called leaky gut. As a, as a result, material that you do not want to cross that barrier and get into your bloodstream, that get exposed to your immune system that's sitting right there at the gastrointestinal lining wall, now become exposed to plant lectins, lipopolysaccharides, and living bacteria are able to uh, they'll use the breaks in the levee, if you will, the holes in the wall, flooding your body with foreign invaders. Inundated by these foreign proteins and other invaders, your immune system does what it does best, producing inflammation and pain. This pain in turn props you to down another NSAID because you're uncomfortable, promoting a vicious cycle which can ultimately result in you seeking out a prescription level pain relievers. Now we talked about this in the opioid epidemic, that we're having, let's say, poor dietary habits, chronic stress, a spine not taken care of appropriately, lack of exercise, a stressful society, lots of pressures, not enough sleep, so forth. All of these detractors that cause pain, chronic pain, and so forth, we start taking over the counter medications, promoting this vicious cycle. They don't work anymore. You build up a tolerance, you move on to stronger and stronger medications, and you can see the rabbit hole that you go down there. 
A, cover, a course of antibiotics now, stomach acid reduces, or even changes in our food supply are also allow bad bacteria to move in and take over in the gut now, disturbing the microbiome, just as NSAIDs do. So now we're disturbing the microbiome. The microbiome are all of the bacteria in your gut. We want lots of those good and neutral bacteria. That is another defense mechanism between the material you're putting into your gut and the particles that are not supposed to be crossing that barrier into the bloodstream. I originally thought that leaky gut was an isolated condition affecting a few unfortunate individuals. Now I'm convinced that leaky gut, says Dr. Gundry, underlies all of our disease issues. We now know that NSAIDs, those, those pills we're taking, damage the mucosal barrier in the small intestine and colon, allowing plant lectins, lipopolysaccharides, and other foreign substances to pass through the intestinal wall, initiating a war within your body. By the way, that is the crux of autoimmune diseases all of them. Not saying that that's the cause of all of them, but this is a pre precipitating event in many cases. Evidence of the war is increasing inflammation, which you feel as pain. And the more you pain you have, the more NSAIDs you take. Remember the poor woman with the intestinal webs at the beginning of this uh, situation here? NSAIDs had so destroyed the walls of her gut that massive amounts of scar tissue had formed because of that break in the wall irritating the immune system, starting inflammation, the inflammatory process, which put down a bunch of scar tissue. That whole process opens up pathways to more invaders while setting up a vicious cycle. The more LPSs that escape, the more pain. The more pain you have, the more NSAIDs you consume until you graduate to the big boys, the prescription painkillers. NSAIDs are both the number one pharmaceutical seller and the number one health menace. That was Dr. Gundry stating that. Great book, by the way, The Plant Paradox. I recommend that as a read. Now, am I telling people don't take drugs? I can't do that. I'm a chiropractor. I, I'm never saying that. And I'm never saying don't take the drugs. And I'm not suggesting that, well, what do I do? Do I just stop, take the drugs and suffer? Well, no, I'm being a chiropractor for 30 years now, a natural healthcare practitioner. I say there are other strategies out there that might help you. Here are eight Chiropractic, we know, and I've talked about this on this program before, chiropractic has gone head-to-head -head against the best medications out there for chronic low back pain, people with low back pain for years, and chiropractic is better than five times more effective than the best drugs that people take for pain. Chiropractic also went against diclofenac for acute low back pain, and we were better than that as well. So chiropractic is pretty powerful for the most common area in the body to have pain, chronic or acute, is your lower back. That's number one. And chiropractic has shown to, to be better than the best drugs out there. Diet. We know that if you clean up your diet, if you take out the, the sugars, if you take out the processed foods, and you eat a more clean diet that everybody knows what that is, and if you take out MSG, which is all the, the diet foods with all the fake sugars in them, if you take those out, we know that that is better than taking pain drugs. We also know that uh, certain supplements, number three, certain supplements, we know that omega-3 essential fatty acids, fish oil, can outperform pain drugs and remove chronic pain in the vast majority of people if you're taking enough of it. A lot of people are taking fish oil, but they're not taking a clinical enough dose. I'll do a show on that later. Number four being general physical exercise after you get your doctor's blessing and to your tolerance. We were talking about that before this show and we know how powerful exercise is, particularly over the long term. Sleep, most people are not getting enough sleep or enough quality sleep. We need to look at that. That would be another great thing to reduce your chronic pain. Stress, we need to do 10,000 shows on reducing chronic stress and relating to the pressures of being a human on planet Earth. I'll invite Tony Robbins in to do a few thousand shows on that. Laser, particularly low-level laser therapy. I've had one in my office now for 14 years and I've had incredible results with low-level laser. Again, no side effects there. And then removing toxins in our world, reducing our personal toxin load. No, we can't clean up all the toxins on the planet, but we certainly can take steps to reduce our, our toxic burden in ourselves as individuals and in our families. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Please join me again.